Standing tall in the halls of our evolutionary past, Homo habilis and Homo erectus hold distinct positions, each representing a crucial step towards Homo sapiens. While separated by millions of years and anatomical differences, their comparative journey through anatomy and physiology unveils fascinating details about our ancient lineage. This video delves into their unique characteristics, highlighting the adaptations that shaped their lives and paved the way for our own existence. Of all the Homo species, Homo habilis is the one that is the least similar to us, the Homo sapiens, living between 2.4 to 1.4 million years ago, while Homo erectus came right after, living throughout the Pleistocene period from about 1.9 million years to most recently 143,000 years ago. Many believe that Homo habilis evolved in Africa and went extinct in the same Whereas Homo erectus originated in Africa and spread through India, China, Georgia, and Java. Homo habilis possessed some ape-like features such as long arms and a moderately prognathic face, while Homo erectus fossils possessed modern human-like body proportions with relatively elongated legs and shorter arms compared to the size of their torso. This evolution led to some of the researchers saying that one population of Homo habilis might have evolved into the earliest indisputable human species, the Homo erectus. Adding one did you know fact, it has been suggested that Homo erectus may have been the first kinds to use rafts to cross oceans. Coming to locomotion and bipedalism, both species embraced bipedalism, a defining characteristic of our lineage. However, Homo habilis, with shorter legs and less efficient strides, differed from the more upright and faster-moving Homo erectus. This advancement, marked by longer legs and adaptations in the spine and musculature, likely translated to greater efficiency in covering territory and accessing diverse food sources. Perhaps the most striking difference lies in brain size. Homo habilis, with an average brain volume of 500 to 600 cubic centimeters, exhibited the early sparks of language and problem-solving abilities. However, Homo erectus, with the brain size ranging from 900 to 1100 cubic centimeters, marked a significant leap. This expansion, particularly in the frontal lobes, hints at improved planning skills and potentially more complex social interactions. Brain size played a significant role in shaping dietary needs. Homo habilis, with the smaller brain, relied on a mixed diet of fruits, vegetables, and small animals. Evidence suggests their tool use facilitated scavenging and processing plant foods. In contrast, Homo erectus, boasting a larger brain demanding higher energy intake, incorporated meat into their diet through advanced hunting tools like hand axes. This shift likely influenced gut biome and digestive adaptations to accommodate meat consumption. Now when we speak of sensory organs and perception, both species possessed good visual acuity, essential for navigating their environment. Additionally, the enhanced auditory capabilities compared to apes suggest improved communication and awareness of surroundings. While Homo erectus might have had a keen sense of smell due to their hunting lifestyle, both displayed similar visual and auditory capacities. Beyond these core aspects, we can also compare them based on their hand anatomy, which reveals adaptations for tool use in both species, with Homo erectus possessing larger and more robust hands suited for crafting advanced tools. While limited fossil evidence hinders conclusive understanding of reproductive strategies, Homo erectus may have lived longer and raised young for extended periods, hinting at more complex social structures. Homo habilis were regarded as the first tool makers. They used simple stone tools, primarily composed of choppers and all the one tools, for cutting and processing meat. And then Homo erectus came along and continued and advanced tool-making techniques. 
They are associated with Acheulean tools, which include hand axes and cleavers, demonstrating more sophisticated shaping and utility in comparison to Homo habilis. Moreover, differences in environment and diet likely led to distinct immune system adaptations, though this remains speculative. It is crucial to remember that these comparisons offer a general picture with individual variations within each species. Every new fossil discovery defines our understanding of these ancient ancestors. By studying these anatomical and physiological differences, we gain a deeper appreciation for the evolutionary pressures that shaped our own lineage and the remarkable adaptations that allowed us to become who we are today. Homo habilis and Homo erectus, though long gone, stand as testaments to the intricate evolutionary journey that led to Homo sapiens. Well, thanks for watching guys. Before you go, do remember to let us know what you think of this video in the comment section down below and please do not forget to support us by liking our videos and subscribing to the channel. See you soon.